What are we doing today? We're gonna attempt to mount monitors. Oh, you don't look, you don't look like you have that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna mount monitors. It's gonna be the first time in like seven or eight years <laughs> since I've run an NV surround setup. What could possibly go wrong on something that NVIDIA has abandoned so long ago? V1 Tech makes it easy to create your dream setup with a wide range of customizable PC parts, desk and wall art, gaming mats, custom phone cases, and more. Choose from existing designs or create your own to bring your favorite art to life, allowing you to truly make your setup your own. And V1 Tech is proud to announce their all new RGB shadow box wall frames, featuring addressable RGB lighting and swappable artwork, allowing you to change the look and feel of your setup quickly and easily with no tools necessary. Start creating your dream setup with V1 Tech by following the links in the description below. So if you guys didn't watch our last video, this is the uh, TK Racing Sim that we got from Micro Center, but the monitors weren't on them because um, yeah, we needed a way to mount them to the base mount better. So like we had to space this out actually. And uh, so what we ended up doing is we got some like nylon spacers and some long M4 bolts to be able to have the monitor spaced out. Cause part of the problem too, is that the cables wanted to interfere on hitting this plate. So we'll demonstrate that in a sec. But what Nick's doing right now is he's loosening up the hinge on this so that we can at least be able to, you know, sort of hinge this out of the way and, and get these mounted up. So these are fully pivotable base amounts but the thing is like the 100 by 100 is like these bolts right here that one that one that one and that one i think it is but like this goes to much larger like we needed smaller plates for this which would have been fine but this will allow us to at least get our triple monitor set up going and although it's gonna be for the racing sim i think it'd be fun to go like maybe get like flight sim or something going on here <laughs> fly the flight sim yo know, we could use the yoke to fly the plane we just wouldn't have any way of doing like pitch like because you could turn the wheel to get roll and then we could literally have gas pedal and clutch pedal be like rudders but we can't uh we can't pull the yoke in and out to get pitch <laughs> just do like a joystick what the mouse pad would be quit being logical <laughs> <laughs> So these are the monitors we got from um, Micro Center. They're LG 32 GP 750 32 inch IPS LCD screens. They're like 279 a piece. They're straight, they're not curved. Curved would have been better, but we had limited options on curved and we didn't want to spend a ton of money on this three monitor setup. But if you look at the back here, you can see like where the vase amount is, is really close to where the cables are. Like they don't come in the side or anything. So we had an issue with that plate one, we need longer bolts, because as you can see, those are recessed because of the way that the stand works for these. And then we need to space it out enough to have clearance for our HD or a display port cable. So, time to get creative. So here's what we came up with. You can see I've got a black spacer there on the back of the screw, a big nylon spacer between the monitor and the VESA arm. That's, focus, it's not ideal. But they're very light monitors, it's not a problem. All I need to hope now is that this can somehow connect, and I don't think that's gonna even come close to connecting. LG, why the hell would you put the freaking connectors so close? Like, literally, why would you put those so close to the base amount? So, before you bother even like bring that one over here. I need to figure out how I'm gonna get a freaking connector in there. So after screwing around with a bunch of different combos of hardware and stuff, it's turned into just kind of a big pain in the ass. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take my angle grinder and I'm gonna actually grind out a big notch to clear the, the, the display port cable. This is like a super universal plate that obviously gives us like base of 100 by 100 and much, much larger. So, we don't need all that. Like we don't need the 100, the 75 or the 50 or any of that. We just need the 100 square. So technically I could just grind it to be a small square, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna notch it. That'll be an easier cut. Like instead of just having just the small square that I need, I think I'm just gonna do a bunch of cuts, right? I'm... Anyway, I wanna get this up and running. I wanna play with it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and get a grinder and grind that out. All right, there we go. Hacked off on one side, you can see it. 
it still barely clears the hinge. Like, look at the display port right there. My goodness, this particular layout for the monitor was just not ideal. So I just hacked one whole side down, I didn't even notch it. I just went straight down. Easy enough, now it'll clear. The spacers are still necessary so the cable has enough relief to bend and not hit the arm. That's sturdy, I ain't going anywhere. <laughs> so I'm not too worried about those spacers or anything like that. All right, now we can just get the other two on. One eternity later. Fast forward another hour or two. I'm really regretting doing the monitor thing. I truly am. Like tri this triple monitor setup is a complete pain in the ass. So you'll notice this gap. There's a gap right there. And that gap is actually better than it was because as you guys know, these arms articulate. But if you look at the limit, right? If you look at the limit right there, I took the screw out. That's as far as that's allowed to pivot. We'll look at the monitor placement. It's almost like they intended these to only be used with curved monitors because then that would have curved back towards that panel. In fact, they would have curved out here more because this panel would have been curved too and then it'd be fine. So it's like it's not designed to be used with flat screens at all, which is kind of a pain in the butt. So what we're having to do now is like remove these two, these two screws right here and slide it out. And I'm gonna have to crank this one down so it doesn't turn. It's still getting supported because it's within the bracket. But what Nick has had to do, as you can see right now, he's trying to close up that gap, is we took the arm and we moved it from this part of the T-slot inward more to try and close that gap. Because we'll gain about two inches of total gap cl closing clearance in the back once we do that. So, I mean, obviously square panel, like straight panels like this are probably not ideal for a racing rig. You'd want to be more curved, I think. But the problem is, this bracket does not allow us to make the panel wing out far enough to ever slide up against that bezel. And then the problem is now, as you can see, the arm sticks out past the monitor. So if I had a chop saw, I'd put the arm in there and I would chop it and then I would just put the new cap on, but I don't have a chop saw, so I can't do that. I mean, that's an easy fix, it's just aluminum, but this is, <laughs> this is what we're dealing with. And it sort of sucks because one of the other things I wanted to do was I wanted to maybe get one of those like flight sim chairs, like a, like a folding flight sim chair that has like a, 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 not a yoke, but like a flight stick in the center and whatever. That way we could like roll it up into these monitors because they're on a separate stand. They don't have to stay with the rig if we go purely VR on the rig. And then we could like use these three panels as like a flight sim thing because VR and flight sim is still terrible. So that kind of did the trick actually. Um, you can see the gap is closed. I don't like how you can see the arm sticking out the side. I mean, it kind of stuck with that because it can support obviously up to much bigger monitors. Technically we could slide it in, but that's more work. We probably want to do <laughs> just to tuck it in. You know, when I'm standing in the center though, they look, see it. they look about, no. Well, when you're sitting here in the racing seat, no, you're not going to see them. But I'm just looking at the way, how much is sticking out on both ends. Like it looks pretty even actually. So what we did on the back, like I showed you, we don't have these screws in there at all. They're, but they're still being supported by the frame. It's still within there. Um, you can see here, I gaff tape the back of the monitors together. One, to block any light from going through, and two, it just keeps them from like moving apart. So both ends are taped together like that. You can see I've got the display port working now. So now, <laughs> I'm gonna slide this a little bit more in the middle of the room, get some cable management going. I have to wire up the, obviously, all three display ports. I'm gonna put a piece of tape on there that says L, M, and R for left, middle, right. Just makes it a little bit easier to keep them uh, identified. <laughs> Ask me in the past about how many problems I've had because I couldn't figure out which cable was to which monitor. Yes. And since all three are display port, where back in the day it was like, HDMI. you only got one or two display ports. Yeah, like an HDMI and the like two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully this works. 3.28 AM. Hey, look, it's up and running. Um, Nick, why don't you show them my amazing cable management in the backside? Okay. Although the tower's kind of in the way. I mean, it's managed. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was a bit of a struggle, but we, we finally did it. I had to make sure everything was plugged in. Now I'm going through the hell of getting all the devices set up because the downside about having multiple brands, like this is a different brand. The, the wheel is a different brand from the base which is a different brand from the pedals, which is a different brand from... The other two stuff. 
They're they're each their own brand, so they each need their own yeah. app. <laughs> anyway, so here's the pedal setup over here. You use Race Director here from SimLab. So I've already calibrated my my gas pedal, so you can see I've got my gas pedal. See that last little bit it's just like. So you can you can actually like mute out the throttle, 100% throttle curve if you wanted, to make it smoother. Like if you know in the middle it's it's like real torquey, you could like. I mean, you could totally just play with the curve, right? Same thing with the brake pedal here. I like this brake pedal a lot. You get a lot of, so I could even make it, right now I've got it, so once I hit the resistance of that that bumper, like the, the rubber bit deal in yeah, there. That's fine. So I, right now you've really got to compress it, right? But I didn't, I didn't calibrate it that far into being compressed. So if you come look right now, Right, it bottoms out before I barely start to compress it. So now I'm gonna make it so I really gotta stand on the brake like a race car. So I hit calibrate again, to sort of really step in it, finish calibration. There we go. So G-Sync compatible, that's on. I'm gonna set power management mode to prefer maximum performance. I want all the performance of the GPU because we have three 2K panels. That's a lot of Ks. And then uh, we want high performance mode, apply. Okay. Set up multiple devices. There they are right there. Surround spanning options. Span displays with surround. I have not done this in years. I'm really hoping this process has gotten better so far. It's exactly the same. Um, but anyway, we don't care about physics. I mean, whatever. So just been configure three, one, two. So those are backwards. I don't know why it's not just mirroring because I'm fairly certain in the OS, it shows that as two and that as three and that as one. <laughs> so I don't know why they're not matching. Technically the resolution it's running right now is 7680 by 1440, which is obviously, that's what it looks like if you were wondering. Okay, all three of them are there. Enable surround. So it should turn off for a sec. Should come back on and look exactly the same with the desktop. And the difference is now, it has done that with our wallpaper. Because <laughs> what it's essentially done now, it, is, it has created a giant screen, right? So now, as you can see, the wallpaper is all kind of screwed up. Oh man, there are wallpapers out there that are designed for like Envy Surround, or you can use a third party app to change the wallpapers on each screen independently. You can also see it moved all of my icons way over there. That's okay. I also don't have any speakers hooked up to this right now, which really kind of sucks. At least you want to grab one of those Bluetooth speakers and just plug it into the port. All right, so in terms of steering wheel, so far in inside Assetto, nothing's lit up yet. Um, I do have resistance on the base though, but you can see our resolution showing up, 7680 uh, by 1440, single screen. Technically it says triple screen, so I could try without NV surround. I could try both ways, I guess. Um, I'm doing frame rate limit of 120. We'll just leave everything sort of where it's at by default. Okay, let's just drive and see if the wheel and stuff starts working or not. How do I change my view? I don't want to see my steering wheel twice. Okay, so we got that working. We don't have the screen working yet at the clutch. Oops, you saw it. That was really weird. <laughs> the sound went away. I need to figure out how to change my view real quick. There we go. Now we're talking. All right. I want it working on here.
Sir Nicholas, your challenge, should you choose to accept it, is can you beat a 132? I some, hope so. Something or another. Oh, restart session. Oh. <laughs> That's your laugh. It is infinite. If you guys are wondering what our speaker is, it's that little bitty Bluetooth one on, on top of the tower. It's actually really loud. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's coming up on his final turn. Oh, oh it did it to me too, though. Yeah. It's auto upshifting. We just have to change that settings. <laughs> I think he beat me though. 131. What? <laughs> he does sim race a lot more than me though. I have not been sim racing like hardly at all. He got his Mazda Cup license or whatever for iRacing, so. Mr. Tryhard over here. I Don't get my seat all sweaty. So Nick's gonna, I gotta leave here sh shortly, but Nick's gonna try and get the wheel working. Um, it's actually working really, really well. So like the triple screen is actually working a lot better than I thought it would. Uh, it's pretty seamless. Well, with the exception of the bezels, haha. -ha. Curved would be good, but this is still good too. Like the, the extra width really helps if you're doing wheel to wheel racing. When you're just time attack, like we're doing right here, it's not that big of a deal, but it would be interesting to see who can turn faster times in VR versus like the same rig, the same setup. We could go VR and then triple screen and see if you're any faster in VR. My theory is that you are because you can see the turn coming better than a flat screen like that. So anyway, is he about to beat his 130? Let's see. 129.5. 129 Sub 130, <laughs> yes. My turn. Okay, 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 yeah. I'm a sore loser, everyone knows this. All right, coming in for your first hot lap. Okay. It's not gonna be as fast as yours. There's more weight in the car when I'm in it. <laughs> this is you're, you're on a rig. <laughs> I do not like that turn right there. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, well, it's definitely harder now. The pedal. Like, he really wants to kick it back. You have to use your big boy muscles now. Oh, so I don't think we filled you in yet, but we adjusted the uh, force feedback settings a little bit, so it's a little bit more. So that's what he's fighting with right now versus what we were doing earlier. I'm gonna see if he can try and beat my time. Still, I don't think he's gonna get it. time for us to get out of here enjoy the new year's uh same for you guys let us know if, what games you think we should try with triple monitor i think flight sim is gonna be one of them because the nice thing is we don't have to have them hooked up to this rig we could hook it up to any computer and slide the monitors away separately um i used to play battlefield with ultra wide <laughs> maybe we'll play around with that rocket league with ultra wide is it really a thing <laughs> why would you want to do that what because then you can see the boosts wherever you are <laughs> i don't know all right, guys, time to get out of here. Thanks for watching. I hope everyone has a great new year and we will kick 2024 off with a bang. So let us know what kind of videos you guys want to see because we want to deliver. That's, That's what we do. We're delivering them. We deliver cruddy vehicles, cruddy videos. I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> He's working on it. He'll come back for 2024. I should be back for 2024, <laughs> God willing. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next one.